Associate, what is the research focus? So uh, my research focus is transport within the cell. So main proteins and lipids and RNA is transport within the cell. And uh, our main target is uh, especially in the neuron because neuron has a very uh, sophisticated machinery for the transport. So that is our major interest. So what impact has super resolution microscopy to your research? So uh, the structure of the transported materials, like the vesicles, is around 100 nanometer. And also the rail for the transport is microtubules, and its diameter is 25 nanometer. And uh, the size of the axon uh, is the place where the transport occurs. Uh, its size is below one micron in the degree. And many structures, like the Dozens of microtubules and dozens of vesicles and dozens of other organelles are packed in that small structures, and that is below the diffraction ring. So that's why we need super resolution. So, what was it like to see the first super resolution image? So, uh, actually, uh, I was very, uh, you know, expecting to expecting on the super resolution. So, my first impression of the super resolution was not so impressive, but. Uh, after I tried first super resolution microscope and they go back to my lab and touch the conventional confocal, I thought something's wrong. So the image was too bad. <laughs> and so now, uh, at that time, so uh, I realized how super resolution was good. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, uh, several of my colleagues have tried our super resolution microscope and uh, they were very impressed with the first images. You know. So which new insights have super resolution enabled you to gain? So uh, currently uh, we are trying to uh, observe single microtubules in the uh, axon because the axon is so packed with dozens of microtubules and it, its uh, uh, interval is below 100 nanometer. But uh, now we can observe single microtubules in the living cells and also the uh, vesicles moving around it. And uh, my uh, long question was uh, the interval between adjacent microtubules is smaller than the diameter of the vesicles, but vesicles can go through it. So something should be occurring. And uh, with the super resolution live imaging, we can see that when vesicle moves, microtubules move away, so that uh, vesicles can go between the microtubules. So that is a new insight. So please tell us which uh, super resolution techniques you are using. So actually we are using all the, all the strategies like uh, structure elimination and the GSDIM and also the step. But uh, for the live imaging, especially as the resolution better than 100 nanometer, uh, this step is the only choice. Okay. Uh, what are the major challenges using these super resolution techniques? So uh, the biggest challenge is uh, the you know, the photo damage because we are interested in the dynamics in the living cells. And in the observation of the living cells, uh, the super resolution imaging always requires good signal to noise ratio. But uh, to get good signal, you need a higher power of excitation. Or for the state imaging, you need a lot of power of state beams. And such high irradiation power can affect the physiology of the cell. So uh, there should be some compromise between the physiology of the cell and also the signal to noise ratio. So that is a major challenge. So how would you rate the future significance of super resolution microscopy for life science? Mm -hmm. So uh, first I met with super resolution. I thought it, it like the uh, initial days of confocal. So uh, about 20 years ago, the first confocal came into the market and most biologists thought it cannot be used for the real biology because it was very bad in the signal to noise ratio and you need much much power for the observation so uh, some people say that it is a bleaching machine <laughs> but now everybody is using so it is uh, necessary too for the current cell biology and similarly within a couple of years uh, the super resolution method will be the must for the, all the cell biologists. So uh, this leads me to my final question. What are your experiences with uh, Leica Microsystems as collaboration partner? Mm -hmm. So uh, actually initially I thought uh, 
German companies uh, is a kind of a very stubborn, so not so flexible uh, than the uh, Japanese uh, local you know, uh, competitors. But uh, I found that Leica was very flexible. It's very open to the opinions from the scientists. And uh, they are very open to the requests of scientists. So, you know, scientists are sometimes very selfish because they want to do something. But uh, in many cases, rapper is very open to that kind of request and they always try to listen to us. So, I found it uh, very uh, fun to work with Laika. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah.